Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. Anyway, as usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Why is the UN still ending poverty after 75 years of ending poverty? Why is $1.90 zero per day used as the poverty line? The International Poverty Line is set by the World Bank. It doesn't necessarily match any specific country's own determination. In fact, the World Bank's newly adjusted level is $2.15 per day, despite the UN using the old value. The data input is based on clothes, food, and shelter as converted into dollar parity. The means of determining the measurement is via survey data, Q, algorithm. The US is measured at the same level, $2.10. According to the U.S. Treasury Department, there are roughly 45 to 50 departments within the government that spend taxpayer dollars. Many of these agencies have accumulated profits converted into assets that invest in the markets to earn some revenue. Some departments earn no revenue at all. And others, such as Social Security, earns little to none, as in 0 0.002 or 0.02%. The agency earning the most revenue is the Department of Health and Human Services, 8%. The net cost of all federal agencies is $9.1 trillion, with revenue at $4.46 trillion, resulting in a fiscal year 2023 deficit of $4.64 trillion, which is approximately a 50% deficit. CBO projects deficit spending will be just $2 trillion per year for the next 10 years. But interest alone is expected to near the $1 trillion mark in 2024, representing 25% of total revenue. Don't worry be happy. Assets of our federal government grew to $5.4 trillion, an increase of $450 billion generated predominantly via property inflation and loans receivable. In the corporate world, this scenario would be grounds for bankruptcy, with liabilities amounting to $42.9 trillion. Maybe the Treasury needs to call in Dave Ramsey to eliminate two-thirds of the departments that have little value to the economy, because in the words of the World Economic Forum, this is unsustainable superfluous agencies. One, others, if the agencies don't deserve a heading chances are they are superfluous, scratch. Two, U.S. Postal Service. Three, National Science Foundation. Four, Railroad Retirement Board. Five, Millennium Challenge Corporation. Six, Smithsonian Institute. Seven, Department of Education. Eight, Security Assistant Accounts. Nine, Department of Health Human Services. What does Department of Health and Human Services do? They fund NIH, CDC, etc. In total, nine sub-agencies, none of which have accomplished much of anything despite being the largest draw on taxpayer funding, gross cost $1.8 trillion. Example, NIH. What has it accomplished? According to their website, noteworthy NIH advances in basic research include charting human genetic variation across the globe, the discovery of lymphatic vessels in the central nervous system, and insights into energy-burning fat cells. We pay $1.8 trillion per year for that. Treasury Department, what do they do? According to their website, Treasury operates and maintains systems that are critical to the nation's financial infrastructure, such as the production of coin and currency, the disbursement of payments to the American public revenue collection, and the borrowing of funds necessary to run the federal government. They charge taxpayers $560 billion for this service. ADP payroll service might be a better option. Overhauling the entire means of spending taxpayer funds seems a necessary agenda if we as a nation are going to be sustainable. The sheer enormity of overspending, agency replication, and fraud is beyond comprehension. Most people have no idea what these agencies do, including their directors. Pete Buttigieg comes to mind. The elimination of just those nine agencies, out of 45 to 50, would reduce our annual costs by roughly $3.1 trillion. Still, not enough but it outlines just how many superfluous agencies have been created to bankrupt America. So who was running the show? The Biden appointments for federal government positions include Blinken, Secretary of State, Cohen, CIA Deputy Director, 
Garland, Attorney General, Haynes, Director National Intelligence, Klein, Chief of Staff, Lander, Office of Science and Tech, Levine, Health Secretary, Mayorkas, Homeland Security, Neuberger, NSA, Sherman, Deputy Secretary of State, Yellen, Treasury Secretary. All in all, Biden appointed 56 Jewish persons to his cabinet. Their job is to serve Americans, not Africa, not Ukraine, not Israel. But that would not be the case in reality. The federal government is obsessed with the needs of every country but America. When determining Americans' preferences, the government is rogue, as evidenced by the number of Americans losing the game of money, as in Americans fed false and corrupt statistics, as in endless wars bankrupting America into massive unsustainable debt. Why isn't the UN helping Americans? Why does the UN claim that all its work is focused on Africa? To end poverty that has not ended in over 75 years. America essentially foots the bill for the UN. Why? What exactly has the UN done for America? Poverty in America. According to the federal government, poverty in America is caused by inequity, and it is no one's fault. When measuring poverty in the US, do the algorithms add in illegals? Census records include illegals. However, when measuring data, the Census Bureau is not unlike polls. They have a pre-selected panel to derive answers to their income and cost evaluations. In 2020, the Census Bureau warned that experimental tables use an experimental estimation methodology and should not be used in comparison to any previous data. Certain groups are not included, prisons, nursing homes, military, college students, homeless, those under 15. The question of illegals is unanswered. In other words, like every other algorithm, America fudges. The data is compiled based on the Census Bureau calling their panel and asking, hey Joe, what was your income? How many live with you? Gross income and family size. The last time the Census Bureau measured poverty was in 2016. The official means of measuring poverty in the US is to take the cost of minimum food requirements in 1963 and multiply it by three. In 1963, a pound of chicken was 29 cents. Today, it is $5 an increase of 1,624%. Beef was 45 cents per pound. Today it is $6 for ground, an increase of 1,233%. That's it, folks. Now it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.